as we learn more about the attempted coup that took place on January 6th, we're learning just how interconnected the entire web of Republican Party politics was in, like, orchestrating this event. Like, it wasn't just a bunch of pro-Trump MAGA chuds that did this on their own accord. It was, you know, the far-right pundits, like Stephen Crowder, who egged them on, and Charlie Kirk, who supplied them with the means necessary to get to the Capitol. But on top of that, literal sitting members of Congress, Republicans, actually aided and abetted this coup attempt. That's what the founder of Stop the Steal, Ali Alexander, alleged before he was deplatformed from Twitter. He uh, has since gone into hiding because I'm assuming he doesn't want to go to jail for inciting a riot and a literal insurrection. But the videos that he posted to social media, they show a lot happened. A lot of crimes were committed by members of Congress. In particular, Andy Biggs, Mo Brooks, and Paul Gosar. Now, The Intercept, uh, they did a phenomenal job putting all of this together. This is kind of a long clip. It's about four minutes, but it is worth watching because what we're going to see here is very, very incriminating for these three members of Congress in question. The head of the House Freedom Caucus, Republican Representative Andy Biggs of Arizona, helped plan the January 6th event that culminated in a storming of the Capitol. That's according to Ali Alexander, a lead organizer of the gathering. Alexander, a pro-Trump personality, was an early founder of the Stop the Steal movement. We gotta save the Republic, right? And helped bring together various right-wing factions around a mass event on January 6. It was aimed to coincide with objections to the counting of the Electoral College. Alexander made his claim in three separate live streams in late December, adding that representatives Paul Gosar of Arizona and Mo Brooks of Alabama were also involved. I was the person who came up with the January 6th idea. And I'm the guy who came up with the idea of January 6th when I was talking with Congressman Gosar, Congressman Andy Biggs, and Congressman Mo Brooks. So we're working with members of Congress while other people are trying to showboat. Uh, we're really working hard because, look, I believe that the president should do something brave. I think that the vice president should do something brave. I believe that that's how we maintain the White House, and I believe that we need to maintain the White House. I think it's a moral imperative. His claim is buttressed by another video from a December 19th rally at the Arizona State Capitol, at which Alexander played a video that Biggs had supplied. Congressman Gosar has been the spirit animal of this movement. One of the other heroes has been Congressman Andy Biggs. Uh, Congressman Andy Biggs sent us a video. Congressman Andy Biggs here. I wish I could be with you today. I pledge to you that I'm going to keep fighting for President Trump. And when it comes to January 6th, I'll be right down there in the well of the House with my friend from Alabama, Mo Brooks. In the video, Biggs mentions Brooks as his ally in the fight. Gosar spoke in person at the event. Freedom isn't cheap, folks. Freedom isn't cheap. But you know what? Imagine this. That you get to go back home once we conquer the hill. Donald Trump has returned to being president. And amazing things will happen in four more years. Big's connection to Alexander was reported on Sunday by the Arizona Republic, which quoted his spokesperson, Daniel Stefensky. Congressman Biggs is not aware of hearing of or meeting Mr. Alexander at any point, let alone working with him to organize some part of a planned protest, Stefanski said. He did not have any contact with protesters or rioters, nor did he ever encourage or foster the rally or protests. When asked why Biggs would record a video for someone he doesn't know, Stefanski told The Intercept, Representative Gosar's team asked for the video, and he provided it. That day, Trump posted to his since-suspended Twitter account, Big protest in D.C. on January 6th. Be there. Will be wild. On the day of the riot, Gosar used his official Twitter account to call for peaceful protests, urging Trump supporters not to get carried away so no one gets hurt, while spreading an entirely different message on Parler, a right-wing alternative social media platform created in opposition to Twitter. Americans are upset, he wrote, sharing a photo of the rioters climbing the Capitol walls. Brooks, after the event, sought to legitimize political violence in a radio interview. In a republic, your principal form of redress of political grievances is at the ballot box. What are your options if you no longer have faith that the ballot box is a way to address grievances because it is no longer honest or accurate. 
Neither Goss nor Brooks responded immediately to inquiries from the intercept. Alexander did not respond to a text or phone call. His voicemail was full, and he has told the Daily Beast that he's gone underground. As the mob broke into the Capitol, Gosar was in the middle of his speech objecting to the certification of Arizona's Electoral College votes. Once the Capitol was cleared and members of Congress returned, Gosar continued to object as blood dried on the marble floors just steps away. Very, very interesting. Again, that was Andy Biggs, Mo Brooks, and Paul Gosar, all working with the organizer of the so-called Stop the Steal rallies, Ali Alexander, who has now gone into hiding because he is worried that he will go to jail for inciting a riot, and he should be worried. But also, these Republican lawmakers should be worried as well. I mean, Paul Gosar on video is saying we're going to quote-unquote conquer the hill. What are those folks who believe the election was stolen from Donald Trump expected to take away from that language? When you use that sort of incendiary rhetoric, what do you expect them to do? Paul Gosar, Mo Brooks, Andy Biggs, all of these individuals, very, very clearly culpable here. Now, they're trying to uh, either do damage control or outright reject this, like Mo Brooks put out this like batshit insane statement uh, saying that this is a political attack on him. But make no mistake about it, we have the evidence now. We've got receipts. You all worked with the organizer of this coup attempt. And now it's time to pay for that right? They should be not only expelled from Congress, but there should be legal consequences for this. And it's not just these three folks, because while we don't have evidence that newly elected QAnon conspiracy theorist Laura Boebert aided and abetted the organizers in the way that those three members of Congress did, she did tweet out on the day that the riot happened, this is 1776, and while the siege was taking place, she was actually tweeting out the location of Nancy Pelosi. Does that not seem odd and suspicious? While there's a coup and you have pro-Trump chuds trying to take over the Capitol, very clearly hate Nancy Pelosi, isn't it weird that you're tweeting out the location of the Speaker of the House? That sounds like you're trying to work with them, get them to find Nancy Pelosi. Now, it's not just Laura Boebert, because Louis Gohmert, one of the dumbest members of Congress, tacitly suggested that, you know, since this election was stolen from Donald Trump, there's only one thing that we can do. Get violent. This is what he said in an interview on Newsmax. But if bottom line is, the court is saying, we're not going to touch this, you have no remedy. Uh, basically, in effect, the ruling would be that you got to go to the streets and be as violent as Antifa and BLM. Well, let me ask be- you. He knows what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. And of course, we can't forget about the role that Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley played in basically leading the charge in the Senate to get Trump supporters believe to believe that the election was stolen and that they're the fighters here who are going to uh, save democracy from the evil Democrats who stole the election from Donald Trump. But these are just the lawmakers. Like, the right-wing bubble is really vast, and there were other individuals who did, in fact, act as co-conspirators. I'm talking about Charlie Kirk, of course. He broadcasted the fact that his organization was sending 80-plus buses full of patriots to D.C. to fight for this president. So Charlie Kirk helped these fascists get to D.C. to storm the Capitol. That's what he did. Now, in a recent episode of his podcast, he did a little bit of damage control and tried to downplay the fact that this was an insurrection. Keep in mind that, like, if this were uh, Black Lives Matter, he'd be saying something entirely different. But this is what he says. Now, we sent our students home on our buses and they left. However, some people went to the United States Capitol and just decided to kind of sit there and watch and look and wave flags perfectly and permissible with First Amendment rights. Now, a lesson that my parents taught me early on is as soon as you see trouble, go the other way. I do not think it was good judgment for people that started to see things happen and they're all this and they rush to the... No, that's just here's, here's a good rule of life. You start to see trouble, just go the other way, okay? Unless you feel as if your independent action can save an innocent person, okay? That's one nuance I'll say. If you see someone getting beaten up, in a subway or something, then you could do something. 
But all of a sudden, if you start to see mass trouble, just go the other way. As you know, very wise people say nothing good happens after 2 a.m., mm -hmm. right? Or happens after midnight. And nothing really good happens as soon as tear gas starts getting spread on the U.S. Capitol, right? And so is that a crime? No, it's not. Is it bad judgment? Yeah, it's bad judgment, okay? It's bad judgment all of a sudden to climb the Capitol steps and walk in the rotunda, and it's just, it's not wise, okay? However, not wise does not mean you're an insurrectionist, okay? Let me be very clear. Just because you do something stupid does not mean you're Timothy McVeigh. Just because you do something that is regrettable does not mean that you're planning an armed insurrection against the United States government. Now, the guy that had the zip ties, I hope he goes to jail. That's just weird, mm -hmm. creepy, wrong, evil, okay? The guys that were assaulting police officers, jail. But the guys that were just kind of there waving flags and they're walking up the steps, and I'm sure that they regret it. I'm sure that a lot of them have said that. In fact, in a lot of these arrests, a lot of these people say this was the worst decision of my entire life. That doesn't exactly talk like a domestic terrorist trying to overthrow the government, okay? Well, their actions indicate otherwise. And look, let's be a little bit charitable. Let's assume that Charlie Kirk supplied these terrorists with buses so they can go to the Capitol and peacefully protest. And he never expected it to get out of hand like that. But ask yourself this, Charlie. If you on your podcast daily are feeding these folks lies about the election being stolen and you have evidence of fraud that took place in Georgia and you tell them literally that democracy was stolen, are you that surprised that they stormed the Capitol? Because if they genuinely believed that the only way to save democracy was to storm the Capitol, don't you think that you are responsible? Don't you bear some culpability here? Doesn't it seem as if they would deduce that storming the Capitol was a logical response to save democracy? And uh, other folks who haven't said a word we hear you. Your silence is deafening. Steven Crowder, at the time I record this video, he hasn't said a single thing, but um, he fed his viewers lies about the election being stolen. And in one video in particular, he uh, titled it Calling All Patriots to Disobey. And in that video, you can see him holding up a gun in the thumbnail. Perhaps Steven Crowder is culpable as well. Culpability here is, uh, it's going to, I think it's going to be far and wide. There's a lot of Republicans who aided and abetted this effort. Folks who lied about the election, who knew what they were doing. I'm talking about Charlie Kirk. I'm talking about Stephen Crowder. I'm talking about elected Republicans such as Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley. There's a lot of blame to go around, but it's not just that like politically and socially we should shun these people. This is a coup attempt. Five people died. We can't just shame you. That's not enough. You can't just be blamed and be shamed. There has to be accountability. There needs to be members of Congress get expelled for what they did, especially Andy Biggs, Paul Gosar, Mo Brooks, possibly Laura Boebert. You all helped with this coup event. Like, this is an attack on democracy, so we can't take that lightly. You can't serve in a democratic institution, in a democratic regime, if you literally are a threat to that regime. These Republicans, regardless of how patriotic they, they want you to think they are, how much they hump the flag. These are fucking traitors. These are traitors who hate democracy.